Hey, welcome. Welcome to Gen Con Online. I'm glad that you've decided to join me for this little talk. My name is Dom Zook. If you don't know, if you're just joining Saving Throw for the very first time, my name's Dom Zook. I am the creator and executive producer here at Saving Throw. I am also uh, assistant director of media operations here at Salt Lake Community College. I have a filmmaking background. I've been uh, involved in the film industry in one way or another, some capacity for about the last 20 years or so. And um, I have a theater degree, not that it matters, um, but uh, there, there are certain idiosyncrasies that, that might come into that. Um, I'm gonna tell you how I like to run streamed RPG sessions. Uh, I am not saying this is the definitive way to run streamed RPG sessions. Uh, uh, I certainly have some unconscious bias about how I run things and, um, uh, and there are other ways to do things. There's there's million ways to be streaming something. Mine is merely one of them. But um, as this is a free uh, talk, uh, I, I recognize that a lot of people may be coming in here um, who can't afford uh, to you know take a class or anything like that in in something similar. So um, I hope that that I can. Uh, um, you know, answer questions uh, as as we as we go. So yeah, so that's a, a little bit of a back, of a background. Uh, I'm going to cover some some things very quickly. Uh, a lot of the basics are kind of it's kind of a 101 on running a business, and so I don't want to cover those too much because there are a lot of resources about these types of things uh, that you can find out there. Um, uh, they're, they're depending on how extensive you want to get in, in the creation of your stream or channel. Uh, but I do want to cover some of the, the basics. So you kind of have an idea, um, where I'm coming from. This is a, this is supplemental income for me. It's not my main source of income. It was for a couple of years, um, which I'll talk about <laughs> a little bit. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I, I was running this as a business, paying people. Um, uh, we had an income, all of that sort of thing. So, you know, you kind of have to think about taxes and all that stuff, but just getting started, there's a real low, uh, barrier to entry for streaming. And you probably realize this, uh, we have the technology at our fingertips. Um, most of us have a computer. Most of us have a webcam. And most of those webcams have mics attached. And so getting online, if you've been doing Zoom calls for the last year and a half, you probably know <laughs> how easy it is to get online with your face and your voice. Um, and that's kind of the, the baseline. That's where you kind of have to start. So um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about is going to be geared towards people who, are, who haven't streamed before. Uh, uh, but certainly you can extrapolate a lot of this info if you're an experienced streamer and are looking to get into streaming role-playing games. Uh, if you're a business who is looking to uh, maybe, you know, you're, you're a publisher or a developer of RP uh, role-playing games um, and you want to, uh, you know, kind of get in on the ground floor of uh, streaming RPGs, this is uh, uh, the way that you can, um, uh, hopefully you can use this info to, to kind of make that kind of build out a simple budget and, and start. Or if you're just, you know, a Ronin <laughs> who wants to make it big in the streaming uh, RPG world, um, you know, uh, hopefully I can help you <laughs> and direct you, um, direct your path. Um, so there will be a Q and a, uh, towards the end, about the last half hour. So usually these are about an hour long, but I've learned that questions, I, you know, no matter how much I say it, it can't apply to every single individual, um, experience level or, um, desire really, um, everybody wants to do something differently and I'm more than happy to try to answer questions. Uh, but, uh, if you can, uh, keep your questions till the end, uh, and I will answer them, you know, as soon as I can, I, I will say, if you belong to the exploration society, which is saving throws, 
uh, um, subscriber only um, thing, <laughs> Co uh, coffee and uh, Patreon. Uh, if you're on one of those, uh, you can submit a question via our Discord, and um, I will answer it via the Exploration Society um, Discord channel. And I will answer those first, and then um, just as a, that's one of the perks you get. Uh, okay. So, where to start? Um, there's a few questions. No matter where you're coming from, where you're starting, there's a few questions that you need to answer. Um, probably the number one question is, who is your audience? Uh, understanding who you are creating content for is going to shape everything else that you do. Uh, every, every piece of content that you create is going to be geared toward that audience. Uh, and then, you know, eventually you, your audience, you might have a really hyper-specific audience that you want to um, connect to at first. Uh, and then that might expand as you go on. Uh, that's certainly the way that it happened with Saving Throw. You know, our, our initial thing was we wanted to reach Pathfinder players or people who are interested in learning Pathfinder. Um, and we've now become people who are interested in role-playing games uh, and showcasing all the, the beautiful variety and color of role-playing games that exists um, now in this golden age. Um, so your, your audience may change as you go, but identifying where you want to start is crucial to building the rest of your channel and your content. Uh, understand where or what games they play and where they play them. Um, and what games do you play? Are you trying to, you know, when we first started Saving Throw, like I said, we were focusing on Pathfinder. That was not a game I was playing at the time. Um, I was I was playing, I was still playing second edition D&D. Um, and Pathfinder was introduced to me after I had the, the idea of doing tutorial content. Um, I was initially going to do it for second edition D&D &D, and someone said, whoa, 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 whoa. There's this thing called Pathfinder out here. You might want to do that. That was before fifth edition even ever came out. So um, it's, you don't have to, um, you know, be locked into the, the thing that you know. Uh, part of the beauty of this is is uh, finding something that you want to learn, and that content can be based out of learning that new thing. That was that's exactly what we did. We developed the tutorials for Pathfinder because we were learning Pathfinder, um, and we could share that with the audience. So, what games do, does your audience play? What games do you play? Um, where does your audience congregate? Are they on Reddit? Are they on Twitter? Uh, TikTok? Uh, there's a there's a huge RPG contingent on TikTok. I, I'm too old for it. I'm not too old for it. I hate that phrase. But I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> I will say I wait for it to hit Instagram or something, uh, or Reddit, and then I then I laugh at the TikTok. But um, uh, the audiences are all over the place. Uh, find out where your audience is and integrate there. Um, uh, learn what they are looking for, what they're talking about, what they're interested in. That's going to be a huge component and help you develop your content down the line. What is your audience missing? If you can identify what the audience is looking for, um, and it could be something that you're the only person who can present that information. And in most cases, that's true because everyone has a unique voice and everyone is going to have a unique take on the situation, right? This is why you can have dozens and dozens of pundits, you know, in politics and stuff like that, who are saying the same thing, but they're all saying the same thing differently. And people are going to pick that up, you know, in different ways and they're going to hear it in different ways and so the way that we teach pathfinder may not be the way that you teach pathfinder um uh or the way that we play rpgs may not be the way you play rpgs it it, it, it can go on and on but um that can be one of the things you could determine that hey this audience needs my voice 
Um, and why do they need that? Uh, answering that question, again, that's going to be crucial. Um, what's it, Maybe there's something, again, that you feel you can do better. You've seen our, you know, almost decade old Pathfinder videos and you're like, I can make a better version of that. Uh, great. Uh, that's something, that's what we, that was one of the things that we did that, that, you know, we felt we could do better than what was out there at the time. And that's what kind of prompted us. Uh, is there content that's not being made that you think would be beneficial? Maybe you have a favorite game and there's currently no tutorial content on it, you know, uh, making that tutorial content you, you're like hey this audience is big people are looking for this content and want to see um this game and how it's played i can make that content because i understand this game i know i know how to do it finding what your audience is missing is going to um again help shape that content and what you're going to create and it's okay if you just want to have a place to post your game on the internet and don't care about an audience. You don't have it this you don't have to be performative. This doesn't have to be an event. Uh, if you just are looking for a way, a technical way to, for recording your stuff and getting it online so that you know your uncle can uh, view it in in Chattanooga uh, or whatever, um, that's completely valid. Um, and so some of this may not be crucial to your getting started, but um, uh, I, I say that that is a valid way of, of doing this thing. We'll get into more of the technical end of things in a little bit later. Uh, another question you should answer is how much time you can devote to this. Um, to grow your channel, you're going to need to be consistent. Uh, and that can be posting stuff daily, uh, weekly, monthly. I wouldn't do yearly, <laughs> but uh, uh, you want to have a schedule that's set and you want to continue that schedule and not deviate from that schedule because you want people to be able to find you easily and know easily when more stuff is going to come out. Down the road, when you get big and famous, Consistency doesn't matter as much. Uh, and also the content, the type of content that you're making might lend itself to not having a consistent release schedule. Um, a lot of times there's talking head content out there that's just, I release a video when I have, you know, either my my patrons have, have paid for this video or uh, whenever a topic comes to me, I'll play a video or I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do a video or something like that. That's all fine, but it's, it's really good to have like, you know, every Monday at 10 a.m. I'm posting my content. Every Tuesday at 9 a.m. we post that the past week's um, podcasts. That's, that's one of our things. And then I have a fairly inconsistent content posting schedule. Uh, you'll find a lot of these things are do what I say, not what I do type things <laughs> because I'm a one man operation, but the, I, I will tell you how you can do this as a one man operation. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. What, what Daniel says, scheduling is an issue for most game groups. Getting a regular game session going already is an achievement. Um, yeah, that's, that's a huge component. You know, uh, if, if, playing an RPG regularly is, is your thing. Like this is a good motivator to do that. Uh, so answer that question. How can I devote, how much time can I devote to this? Uh, don't quit your day job is <laughs> another way of saying that. Um, it, it, it's going to take a while before you get to a point where you can, you know, feasibly consider quitting a day job but honestly most people even streamers even big streamers that you see everywhere you know there's there's probably one group of streamers and i'm sure you know who they are they rhyme with riddle hole and they they can make a living doing this actually they don't even they they also have separate jobs that they do so you know it's there's a lot to it this is this is a big market and the 
there's not a whole lot of money into it. So I don't want to get anyone's hopes up that, hey, you know, this is something that's easy to get tons and tons of money for. Uh, and everyone's just dying to give you money. Um, so uh, next up, who do you need? Um, it could just be you. Uh, like I said, I am a solo operation. Um, but it could be a team of people. You, you might have friends that are capable of doing things that you're not capable of doing. And together you can create this, you know, awesome stuff. Uh, you know, maybe you're good with the tech stuff. They're good with the graphic stuff. And together you can make um, magic happen. Um, but just as a baseline, these are positions that you should account for, whether it's just you or whether you are able to um, uh, get other people involved. Uh, number one is probably going to be your tech director. Um, this person is going to be the one who is operating the stream, switching cameras if you have multi multiple cameras, making sure the audio and the video is good and in sync. Uh, everything is feeding into the stream as it should. Your Roll20 uh, image uh, or, or map is is playing in there. Your Sirenscape audio is is playing. Uh, everything is, is coming in. Your captions are working right. Uh, all of that stuff. Uh, that's, that's the job of the tech director. In many cases, uh, the GM is the tech director because the GM is generally the person who is, you know, running roll 20 and where a lot or any, I, I use roll 20 as the Kleenex of VTTs. So it doesn't have to be roll 20. It could be foundry. It could be, you know, whatever. Um, but, uh, the GM is already in the know of kind of what the tech stuff needs to be. Uh, but I stress that it is important that you understand sort of the technical needs of a stream. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, is, is dynamic lighting working valid on you? Oh yes, you, you know, oh yeah, I've got a lot of work ahead of me anyway. Um, uh, having someone that's separate from the game able to work on that tech stuff is, is very nice. It's not, it's not possible with everybody, but if it's something you can work towards, that would be the first position I would try to find someone, um, that can help you with. Um, again, it, it also depends on how extensive and elaborate your, um, setup is and, and what you're trying to do. You may not have a whole lot of tech that you need. It's, it's all theater of the mind. Uh, you know, everyone's sitting at the same table, that, that sort of stuff. You may not need as much of a, of a load and heavy lifting with technical stuff as you would, um, you know, if you were shooting in a studio or something like that, or doing a remote stream. Um, so consider that. Uh, social media is another position. Who's posting? Who's engaging with those posts? Who's reaching out to people? Who is making up the content that goes on social media? Uh, there's graphics involved. There's, you know, editing. There's a lot of stuff that goes into maintaining a, a, a social media presence. Um, and not just on Twitter, but on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitch, on <laughs> Discord, on TikTok, on all these places. Uh, again, where is your audience? Direct your um, focus to where your audience is. Uh, at first, uh, we can talk about branching out to find an audience that you want to have. Um, but for now, go to where your audience is. Uh, editing. Um, this at some point you will likely uh uh find that you need to edit your content whether you need to trim out some time uh like you had a break in the middle uh you want to cut that out of the youtube um cut you want to uh, uh find a, a the perfect clip to share on your social media you need to just trim that out uh, add sound effects camera angles um ads graphics whatever uh at some point, you will probably need to pick up an editor and start working on that. Uh, so again, you can find someone who does that. 
uh, or you can do it yourself. Uh, and depending on the kind of content you're going to do, uh, writing that content, coming up with that content, um, it may seem like a no brainer, of course, you know, you're going to be doing this content, you're going to be making it, but be it social posts or sketches, uh, campaign Bibles, wiki articles, tutorial videos, someone needs to sit down and at least outline that stuff and, um, and create it and, and have it so that you can go because just winging it on, on once that's fine when you're in game uh i mean that's what we do you know it we have we have a an intro that is scripted essentially and then the game starts and whatever happens in the game who knows you know but that's how rpgs work uh but we still need that section at the front and we still need someone writing social media we still need someone writing the sketches or the tutorials that we do um so that's that's another aspect of it now you could be a one-man band you could do all of that yourself and my only um uh caveat i would say is know your limits know what you can do know what you can't do know what you're willing to learn and don't take on more than you can chew because if you start cutting something off, your social media, you're, you're not posting as regularly as you should be, uh, or you're not posting your content as regularly as you should because you can't edit it or you can't get around to editing it, um, know that that will impact your growth. So um, consider that. Uh, I, I started for about a year. We had one show that we did uh, at the very beginning. And then we quickly were having five to six shows a week. Um, and I, at that point, I had a little bit of help. Some people were helping me with social. Some people were helping me with producing. Um, but I was taking on the bulk of, I was doing all the technical directing, all the graphic design, um, you know, all of that stuff. And all of the business stuff, uh, taxes, everything. I was handling all of that. Um, and it's a lot. Uh, and right now I've cut that back down and we have about two shows a week. Um, so consider yourself. <laughs> I tell you this because your future self will, will thank you for not, um, stressing it out. Um, so that's who you need. Uh, and then now I want to talk uh, briefly about, um, what you need technologically to start with. Um, but I will preface this by saying, work with what you have. Don't run out and buy all new gear, uh, thinking you're going to run, you know, a, a studio and multi-camera and have everything going. First of all, if you don't know how to do that, uh, that's a very expensive hobby to get into. Um, second of all, uh, it's, it's a lot of work to, up, to update and maintain that equipment. Um, and it costs a lot of money. <laughs> so if you have a laptop like this with a camera like that, um, and maybe some Bluetooth, uh, uh, headset microphone, you, uh, are, are essentially good to go. Like if I was at home, I would have my Elgato wave microphone, uh, and I have a nice camera that I can use. Um, and, uh, uh, other things, but um, I'm not. I'm here at my office, so uh, I'm working with what I have. But this gets me online, right? So uh, don't get too hung up on having the best camera or the best microphones or anything like that. Start with what you have and then start building from there. Um, so uh, software. Uh, I use OBS Studio. I'm currently using OBS Studio um, and uh, streaming from, from that. I love it, uh, and there's a lot that you can do with it. Uh, other people like XSplit. Um, there's, honestly, there's a ton. Uh, the 
one of the big ones is Streamlabs OBS or Slobs, uh, which is OBS based, but is a little bit more friendly, uh, a little bit more plug and play, uh, but it doesn't have some of the advanced features that OBS Studio has. Uh, I would recommend starting with Streamlabs OBS because it's, it's really simple and it's really plug and play and it can do some pretty powerful things on its own. Uh, but um, it, it's also free. So that's great too. Um, if you want to start getting into more advanced things uh, like scene transitions and things like that, then I would recommend OBS Studio. Or uh, if you have some money to spare, uh, you can look at vMix, which is another um, piece of software. vMix is expensive, but it is an industry standard. A lot of um, uh, live events are moving over to vMix because it's robust and, and powerful and um, pretty rock steady uh, with everything you throw at it. But it's also a very steep learning curve. And I'm, I'm in film I'm in, I, and I work on things and vMix to me, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense in vMix. Uh, similarly with TriCaster, you might hear that. Th that's just bonkers. No one needs TriCaster to do streaming. Um, uh, it, it is a very nice piece of kit, but I would expect it to be so for $20,000. So don't, don't worry about having to go there. Uh, honestly, you can, you, what you want is a, is a beefy enough PC to handle, um, incoming calls and, uh, branching that audio and video and handling that. And then also streaming. So you want, you want a pretty solid internet connection. You want to be wired, no Wi-Fi. Uh, and have a have a relatively beefy um, computer. Uh, if you have a gaming computer, that's probably enough, you know. Uh, but uh, the more people you have, you know, calling in with Zoom, Zoom uses uses a lot of uh, resources on your computer. And uh, the you know having a laptop, you think, well, my laptop's pretty good, but the laptop doesn't have as many cores as a desktop has uh, unless you buy a really expensive laptop <laughs> and uh, some, you know, you have your OBS up, you have zoom on, you have roll 20 going, you have all these things that are going and everything is using that processor and that memory and uh, things start to flunk out and you're not getting as good a signal. Your camera is starting to not look as good that's because you know you're kind of overtaxing your your computer so so look into consider getting a a solid gaming computer to start with um many people already have that so you know you can like just work with what you have and honestly try it you know if you've just got a laptop like i have a, a this is a nice dell laptop but i uh have an acer laptop at home it's just a cheap literally 600 hundred dollar laptop that i got um, and, uh, it streams just fine. It's, it's, it's not a big problem. Um, uh, if you're asking about the captions, we use web captioner. I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but web captioner is what, uh, what we, what I use for captions when it's just me, but when it's multiple people, I use different software. Um, uh, cameras. Uh, again, um, a good Logitech C920 um, camera will get you very far. <laughs> it's it's a solid camera. I really have very little complaints uh, about it. It's it's not the best quality wise for certain, but it's a very solid camera and it's very inexpensive. Um, you can step up to uh, a a dedicated. Uh, camera like an SLR camera or um, something like that. You want something that if you're going to do that, you want something that has uh, clean HDMI out. Uh, and what that means is when you plug in an HDMI cable into this camera and plug that into your capture device or your TV, there's no menu. There's nothing there. It's just the image that you are uh, hoping to get. Uh, that's clean HDMI, not I think a lot more are, are happening now, but a couple of years ago, not a whole lot of cameras were capable of doing that in, in a decent price range. 
now it's getting better. Um, so yeah, uh, you can use, there's a, there's a lot of different cameras that are, that are capable. There's a software called NDI, which uh, network device interface, I think. Uh, NDI, it's, it's, a, it's free software and you can get it and you can um, use it with OBS Studio, use it with vMix. And it, that essentially makes any network attached device uh, become a camera, can become a camera for you. So, you know, I can plug in my, uh, my Android um, camera. Uh, I can um, get another computer that's away from me and but on my same network and bring that in as a source. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to, to do that. It also with NDI, it allows you to use your camera in multiple um, settings. So if you're on Zoom and you're on OBS, one of those, if you just have one camera, one of those is going to be, um, uh, uh, it's going to say, no, this is my camera. You can't have this camera. Uh, Logitech has a software called uh, Logicam, Logic Capture. Uh, and you can use that, which basically creates a virtual camera. Uh, OBS also has a virtual camera setting that you can use, OBS Studio. I don't know if Slobs does, but uh, it has ways of sending that camera feed to another program. So um, there are multiple ways of bringing in an image, uh, but uh, I wouldn't stress too much about having a great camera. Uh, but, um, you know, you can uh, move up as you go, but having a webcam is good. Uh, one thing I will say is that, um, you cannot, uh, multiple USB cameras on one computer will usually not work well. I've known people who can do it, but the, the way that the USB signal works, you're on this bus that is taking the signals and uh, if you have multiple things trying filling up that bus and they're all having HG video coming through it's not gonna it's not gonna work well you're gonna get stuttering you're gonna get weird um, uh, ghosting and stuff like that uh, so be aware of of that don't think you can grab five Logitech C920s I'll plug them all into your computer and hope that you're gonna be great um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm not showing any drop frames and, uh, everything is holding steady. So yeah, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just Twitch being, being funky, but yes, uh, this will be uploaded to our YouTube, uh, af after the fact, probably in the next week or so. So if you can't stick around, um, capture cards. If you are stepping up into luxury cameras, uh, an HDMI or SDI uh, uh, capable camera, you will probably want to get a capture card or you're going to need to get a capture card to get that into your computer. Uh, you, uh, there's a lot, uh, some connect via USB, uh, some um, are cards that physically go into your uh, PC tower but uh, uh, they all have, they're all relatively the same. Uh, there's, there's a great expanse and cost uh, of these things. Uh, Elgato has a bunch of devices that, that you can plug in an HDMI uh, signal into. So, you know, a lot of times they're used for getting your PlayStation or, or Xbox into um, the computer. So you have that as a source, but you can also plug in a um a camera into that uh and all the the hd connect 60 or um uh, other devices that they have black magic aja or aja they both have device uh devices that you can get to um plug in i've found that the um aja aja devices are a little bit more solid than elgato or black magic they they tend to be recognized and steady uh but I've honestly not really had much problems with Blackmagic uh, or Elgato devices either. So um, your mileage may vary, but you will need one of those if you want to get like a, uh, you know, a point and click camera, an SLR camera in. 
Um, let's see, audio. Audio is arguably more important than video. I say this every year. Uh, people will turn off good video with bad audio. I guarantee it. If, if you can't hear me, you're, there's no reason watching me. <laughs> you're not getting anything unless you're watching for the captions. Uh, but a bad video with good audio will, people will stick around. You'll get, you'll have a larger retention rate that way. So I very much encourage people to invest in audio before you invest in cameras. Your webcam will carry you through no problem, but a good microphone audio device will uh, really set you apart from a lot of streamers. Uh, I will give you some of my recommendations. Again, these are not end all be all. There, there are a lot of different solutions for you. Um, but one that I found recently that I really like is the Elgato Wave 3 microphone. Uh, it's a USB mic. It has a pretty good pickup. It's a cardioid pickup pattern. Cardioid is basically, it means that the, the way that it picks up sound is in about a heart um, with the, the microphone at the kind of point of the heart and it goes out like this. Uh, that means it picks up basically what's right in front of it and doesn't worry about what's behind it or to the sides of it. And so you get a very nice clean sound um, from those types of microphones. Uh, the nice thing about that microphone is that it also comes with the Wave software, which uh, allows you to assign different audio uh, resources, their own um, section, so that you can operate them separately from uh, each other. Usually what happens in, um, in streams is that everything is running through the system sound, uh, be it Mac or Windows, everything comes in via the system. So your Zoom call is in the system, all of your audio, your Roll20 audio, whatever, Sirenscape, it's all in one thing and you've got it all together. So if someone's really loud or your audio is really loud or whatever, it's like you can't, you, you have to go into that program and manually adjust it or you have to turn everyone down. Um, so being able to have separate audio is, is kind of a crucial key component, um, for streaming RPGs. What I do with, uh, my wave software is I have my VTT on one channel. I have my uh, audio, my music, my soundboard on another audio. I have a uh, voice mod, which is a piece of software that allows me to change my voice. Uh, I have that on another channel. I have my audio on another channel and I have every individual player on their own channel. So I can adjust everyone's individual audio as we go. Um, so yeah, I, I think that that's a really strong piece of kit to have. You can do similar things um, for free. Uh, there's a program called Voice Meter, uh, M-E-E-T-E-R, that uh, is, I believe it's pay what you can. Uh, and uh, it does essentially the same thing, but I've had issues getting it to work. There's a bit of a learning curve to get it to work, and so it kind of takes a little bit, but um, it does essentially the same thing. If you have a lot of different um, sources that you want to come in, which we often do as an RPG, uh, you may have to pay for additional, what they call virtual cables, um, but... Uh, the wave system comes with, I think you can have up to something like eight or nine different sources, which is more than enough for us. Um, uh, there's also the Go XLR, which is a, a whole device that you plug your microphone into. And it's a hardware based version essentially of the wave software. Um, uh, the Elgato software, I believe is now available no, I think you have to have an Elgato. There, there's two things you can get with that. You can get the Elgato Wave or you can get the Elgato Wave XLR, which allows you to connect any XLR microphone uh, into your computer. Uh, it just acts as a bridge device. Uh, but you have to have one of those for the, uh, the Wave software to work, I believe. 
I don't think they've changed that. Um, and lastly, uh, you want a service that can bring in your players. For a long time, we had all of our players at, around sitting at a table together. Um, but with COVID and everything, we've had to resort to remote play. And honestly, um, a great many uh, people don't have the resources to do a all-in-person stream. That takes a lot. It takes lighting. It takes microphones. It takes lots of cameras, things like that. Um, so a remote stream is usually the most economical way of bringing in a bunch of people. Um, and there are a number of software choices for that. Zoom is probably the most prominent. Uh, Zoom has issues though, because it can't do what's called uh, isolated or ISO um, uh, streams for each person. So everyone is together and you have to kind of uh, in OBS or in your capture software, uh, your streaming software, you have to bring in that window. And uh, the way that I do it right now, if I were to do it, um, is bring in a each person as their individual window. Uh, the issue with that is that uh, if someone drops connection, which often happens on Zoom, it adjusts everyone and suddenly all of your people are in uh, different rooms uh, or sorry, different areas. And you have to rejigger everything back to where they belong. Uh, Skype uh, allows you to do ISO um, individual sections. So you have everyone together. They're all in the same group. They're all talking to each other, but they are essentially individual streams that you can bring in individually. The downside to Skype is it has a limit to the uh, your monthly um, time that you can do that with, and most RPGs would greatly <laughs> break that limit. I think it's something like 10 hours a month or something of, of streaming. So if you're only streaming for an hour and a half or so a week, like maybe two hours a week, you'll probably be okay. But uh, with us, with you know two different shows, uh, and most shows being two to three hours long, we don't want to risk it. Uh, the option that I use currently is a software solution called video.ninja. Um, video Ninja is a uh, free software and it allows you to do that ISO recording. It has some pretty major caveats. Uh, the, the biggest one is um, it uh, is essentially beta software. It is, it's not, um, you know, and there's one guy working on it <laughs> and he's awesome and he's really receptive and he fixes things very quickly. However, uh, if you're looking for a very stable solution, it, that might not be the one, but, uh, video ninja allows me to not only capture everybody individually, but I can also monitor their, um, system. I can help them choose the camera and uh um uh camera and audio source that they are using and it also allows me to capture captions for every person and it allows me to change the quality of the stream that i'm getting from that person um it does take up quite a bit of processing power and and bandwidth uh to be quite honest uh but it is a much higher quality stream than you would get from say zoom which you know compresses everything down so that it's a much more fluid experience for everybody uh if you are able to be the sole person doing technical um or or if you have someone who can just do the technical end of things i do highly recommend video ninja um, for that um, purpose but it does take someone who is going is who can just fully concentrate on it um, there are issues with uh, individuals' machines. You 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 have to be connected to Ethernet. Wi-Fi just it just doesn't work well. Uh, but that's true for anything really. Uh, anytime you can get everybody connected on a wired connection is going to be better. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, um, it also takes a lot of processing power. So if they don't have a very strong computer, uh, it it can eat up and that will degrade the quality of the video. So 
if you want something that is rock solid and you're okay with the the picture quality maybe not being great and you're okay with the the possibility of someone dropping out so you have to re move everything around go with zoom uh but if you have the ability and um inclination to work on the more technical end of things check out video ninja uh, vmix has its own call in function uh very similar it works very similarly to video ninja but it's all built in with vmix but it also has some some limitations i think you can only have four people uh, i think is max for that call in feature uh and it's also you know you can only get that call in feature if you get the higher tiers of the vmix package so it costs it costs there's a there's a barrier of entry with cost there um but yeah worth checking out uh so zoom video ninja those are generally the two that i would go with google meets that works too discord that works too um you know there's there are there are options out there uh to do this you don't have to get something that's you know um it's nice that you don't have to settle for just one thing you know it used to be skype forever and now now that everyone's going online for things because of covid a lot of tools are coming out and there's a lot of competition now to make the best tools for that um but i found that zoom is the most consistent uh quality and everything but video ninja is a step up and allows me to do a whole lot more with my um setup that i can't do uh with zoom uh okay i i want to try and kind of quickly go through this so that we have sort of the last half hour to um uh i can answer questions that you may have and uh go from there so I, i'm going to try and cover this very quickly again this is sort of 101 stuff but uh i think it's important the big question that i get asked is how do i grow how do i be go from you know zero to one uh audience members to 50 audience members how do i grow from nothing to affiliate to partner on twitch how do i how do i get to that point um eh, it's not easy <laughs> that's that's the really simple answer you just got to kind of keep at it but um let's start off with marketing uh i'm guilty of this a lot but if you can help it don't let your social streams become purely ads for your next show. Uh, I'll go into this more when I kind of cover engagement, but um, if you're only posting, hey, my show is tonight at four o'clock or whatever, and that's all you're posting, people are eventually gonna tune out because you're not providing much information for them. You're not providing anything for them to engage with. Um, so be cognizant of that, uh, but I'm coming at you. I'm telling you, I, I do that. That's predominantly because I don't have time to create a whole lot of social content. So, uh, I can only do the very, you know, the bare minimum. That is certainly the bare minimum. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, I will tell you that it is difficult to grow, uh, your audience when it's just sort of the same content week after week after week. And it's just telling people when to tune in that's that's hard so just understand that develop your brand as well as your look uh your brand and your look go hand in hand but they are not the same thing your brand is more or less the type of content you do what and how you say it and where you predominantly say it so saving throws brand is uh that we're focused on teaching games uh through diverse actual plays and tutorials on twitch and youtube that's our brand um that is not our look that is not our logo <laughs> you know our 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 look is uh we are the attempt of our look is to look like a uh if you go to like our coffee or or page or or, or uh our patreon or whatever the, you know the look is intended to be a rustic adventuring society uh but you know we don't always do that because we have a lot of different content and sometimes rustic adventuring society doesn't fit with therosian uh ancient greek you know uh D, D game um or uh um you know a modern anime uh rpg like new pantheon 
it doesn't fit that aesthetic so the look can change but the brand is the same every show is the same brand but the look is different for every show uh, but we still have that saving throw logo up in the corner you see it up there uh, that's our that's our consistent logo but every show will have its own look but the brand is always the same hopefully that makes sense uh, think about your brand think about those things uh, because that's all of you everything that you do is feeding into that brand uh, and if you're all over the place with what you're doing if you can't consolidate that into a sentence you're probably tackling too much and your your audience is going to be splintered and it's going to be very difficult to to bring people together and grow um your overall channel look um could be different for each show that you have right uh it's it's the colors that make up the logo it's your overlays your promos your the photographs your character designs all these things make up the look of the show uh and you want you want that to be consistent you want people to go oh when i see these colors when i see these images it's that show um hopefully that kind of makes sense uh again consistency is key so set a schedule for your announcements your uploads your promos all of that and stick with it as best as possible um, the the closer you can uh, keep to that schedule the more people will be coming back and going oh i know at 10 o'clock they always post a new video so i want to i want to tune in at 10 o'clock because i want to be the first one to watch this video if suddenly that video doesn't appear at 10 o'clock that day uh people go oh well now i don't know when it's coming back i guess i'll just wait for them to tell me and i don't know and you'll get lost in the shuffle twitter is bad about algorithms um facebook is even worse so you want to try to be consistent so that your audience doesn't have to go hunting for you whenever you have something new i want to talk about engagement a little bit um Engagement is probably going to be the biggest key to your success. And it's honestly one of the hardest things to do and to do well. Um, engagement is interacting. It's, it's having a conversation, not just with your fans and your audience, but with other creators, uh, especially creators that might be slightly bigger than you or even way bigger than you uh but this is the key component someone can come in off the street and if they have something interesting that they can contribute to a conversation that's going to help them be a member of that community it's a really esoteric way of putting it but um let me try and break it down uh talk to other creators rating channels after you stream uh be a part of your audience if your audience is into um you know powered by the apocalypse join the pbta subreddit and talk with them go what are you excited to see oh i'm looking forward to this game oh i backed that game on kickstarter talk have a communication don't just come in there and go i'm running a pbta game see you at five bye talk to them um use social media to be social <laughs> congratulate a streamer on getting that partnership offer advice if asked for um but bottom line communicate uh have a back and forth ask a question to get people engaged with your content um share content you enjoy with your audience not only does it help curate your audience because you're going to start uh the audience might dwindle at first because they're like oh this person's only talking about tutorials or this person's only talking about tieflings or this person's only talking about d20 games or whatever um but it will help curate that audience and be make them into super fans uh, it also helps build the community because you are sharing content around and you are building that and you are becoming what's called a tastemaker. You are telling people 
this is content you should be watching. Uh, it also establishes you as a place for people to find new content. Uh, one of the key factors of the internet is people want clearing houses. They want someone to point them in the direct. There's so many places to go to. They want someone to tell them this is where you should go. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a really key um, aspect of things. And there are a lot of people that do this. And a lot of them have the same voice. <laughs> so if you can find a different way of doing that um, and lift up other voices, that is something that's going to help you stand out from the crowd. Uh, and, and not only that, but it's going to help diversify the community as well. But uh, share content that you enjoy. And that is going to um, solidify things. <laughs> Uh, some share content like this through um, paywall sites uh, or subscription programs so uh, or mailing lists, basically ways to, for lack of a better term, segregate your audience um, by, you know, you, you say something, hey, if you want to see the latest, you know, the top five RPG streams of the week, join my patreon and uh, you know where i talk about them and tell you what what's wrong with them or something like that like i would not watch that but um <laughs> that is certainly something to do it's smart but it also inhibits people from accessing your content and you don't want people uh personally this is again my personal bias you don't want people to think they can only get your content if they pay for it if they don't know who you are you're very likely not going to get that person's dollar okay so be be cognizant be aware of of what you can use these things for but also don't you know don't just jump into a coffee account and hope that people will pay for it to see what you have to say about something that's not going to work uh give your viewers and fans a way to talk with you uh try to be active in the areas that they congregate we talked about that before reddit social media whatever and and again don't just post promos everywhere uh i'm super guilty of this so <laughs> take take my advice with a grain of salt but uh so long as you respect the space that your audience is in uh you will uh go far they will they will respect you back um uh you know let them know that you are a streamer uh, but don't come in there your first post Hey, I hear you like, you know, Gundam. We're doing a Gundam RPG and bye. You know, it's like they have no idea who you are. They have no idea. You might be a Gundam super fan, but you've never been on the Gundam subreddit. You know, it might be. And these are your people. These are the people that want to talk about Gundam. You know, like, maybe this is a terrible example, but um, this is you want to kind of be there you want these people to find you uh maybe you are do cosplay and uh you do cosplay of a specific show or genre or uh, uh, uh movie or um rpg stream or whatever uh and you want the people that also do cosplay to uh to find you or the people who are into those things to find you um you know you you find the, the people who are um, sort of at the top of their game and are uh, kind of the, the names you associate with like RPGs or whatever, they are constantly engaging their audience. They are asking the questions. They are posing questions. They are posing answers. They are giving advice. They are opening up themselves on Twitter, on Instagram, on Discord, wherever. And starting that conversation and they keep that conversation going if you ask a question and don't respond that's no better than posting a promo but if you can keep that conversation going that's that's going to go a long way uh if you lack engagement your audience will start tuning out what you're posting uh, so give them something to connect to a riddle a quest a funny anecdote a a clip from the stream that you thought was really funny or really sad or just really exemplified that that uh, episode post it 
you know, and, and ask them, what do you think? How did this go down? How would you have done this? Get, get, get things going. Uh, you want to get that engagement. The engagement is really key. Um, and give your audience a place to meet and interact with each other. Discord is a very a big example of this, but they can also do it on Twitter or Facebook. Um, and, uh, you know, also a wiki or whatever, uh, giving people places to go and things to do uh, helps keep that community building when you're not streaming and so that's it's a it's a real key example of uh community growth and when your community grows you grow so okay those are the real basics we've got a little less than half an hour left um so i want to try to open this up to questions uh, because now we're going to start getting into specifics about how to do things and stuff like that, I imagine. Uh, and um, I want to talk about how to make your stream awesome. I will say if you have a very specific, very specific question to maybe ask me offline, ask me on Discord or, or shoot me a Twitter uh, DM or something like that so that I can hopefully give you a little bit more direct message. But if you have a more generalized question, I will try to answer it then. Um, but yeah, uh, you can check out a lot of stuff that we've done here on Saving Throw Show. Uh, you know, we do funky transitions um, with with our overlays. We do intro videos, uh, the, you know, highly edited uh, intro videos with a composer who has made music directly for the show. Um, work with a lot of graphics and, and things like that. Um, there's a lot of ways to make your content unique. And uh, once you kind of get those basics down uh, that, I, that I outlined, it's, it's really just kind of watching other streams and going, that's really cool. I think we could adapt that and make it better. Uh, and I'm constantly evolving the look of our streams because, you know, technology improves, but also um, the way information is cataloged and assessed is different too. So anyway, I open it up to the floor. Uh, if you have questions, I would love to answer them. Um, I don't mean to put you off and be afraid to answer if you have a specific question. I'm happy, but I, I may like just give a very... Uh, trite response uh, that and I can elaborate later. So ask away whatever you want. I'm going to take a drink of water. Is anybody at Gen Con right now? If, is anybody watching this like actually at Gen Con? Uh, Alpha Stream, hello. Um, you mentioned a couple of options for the captions. Oh, yes. So, uh, one option, a uh, relatively simple option, is uh, a browser-based uh, software called Web Captioner. Uh, Web Captioner, you can get a uh, essentially a link in the software, and everyone on their own computer can open up Chrome, go to Web Captioner, get you that link, send you that link, and you can pull it in as a browser source uh, here. And uh, that's awesome, that's great. Um, that just means that you have to pull in everybody's web captioner and you have to get it every week, basically, because the web captioner links go away after uh, like 48 hours, something like that. Uh, what I have started using, and it works pretty much just as well as web captioner, is the uh, built-in captioning of Video Ninja. If you add a parameter to the URL, um, uh, it will get the captions from the uh, um, from the from the player, and uh, that's it. No fuss, no must. The player doesn't have to deal with it. You get it in automatically. It's still a browser source that you have to bring in, but. Um, you don't have to keep asking for it every week. It's automatically, it's automatically done. So uh, it's it's quite handy. So that's those are two. Uh, Web captioner much more straightforward, a lot easier to implement, but 
a lot of upkeep video ninja um a lot that you have to start off with but once you've got it uh into your software it's set it and forget it um green lantern Green Lantern is one of my favorites. Who's your favorite Green Lantern? Um, do you recommend a specific soundboard or are there software options? Uh, uh, I use software options. I was talking earlier about using uh, the Elgato Wave software, uh, but we have used um, uh, mixers before, uh, Behringer mixers. We've used Mackie mixers, Yamaha, whatever. That's all fine. If everyone's in the same room, then yeah, it should make sense to have a mixer uh, and bring in those so sources you know with microphones into that mixer uh but if you're dealing with remote uh players then you don't really need a mixer you can use a mixer but uh uh it's a little bit more complicated the audio routing to to deal with that and it, for me it was as a solo operation it was way easier for me to use the wave um software to get everybody on their own isolated stream um or isolated audio source so that's that's what i would recommend uh again the there's voice meter which is free that uh, does this, pretty much the same thing as the wave software but it's a bit more complicated to get up and running uh, and working properly uh wave just kind of works which i really like although it's recently been giving me there was an update and it's been giving me some trouble too but um but uh yeah that's that's what i would suggest Yeah, voice meter is great. I used voice meter for a long time. Uh, once I finally figured out how to make it work right, uh, and uh, once I finally got it working right, it was great. But uh, uh, sometimes updating the computer, a Windows update, or adding a new audio device or something like that will throw all of the settings off. Uh, but it's honestly that's not endemic to voice meter uh if that happens with a lot of audio things audio is just tricky uh so yeah um seeing so david asks for people that want to create overlays for their streams which resources software do you recommend um whatever you're comfortable with uh if you are if you want to do the graphics use whatever you're comfortable with uh people have used gimp people have used uh, i use photoshop uh um you could use them as paint honestly whatever whatever you're most comfortable with i would say use you don't have to jump into photoshop or, or anything to to make serviceable uh even good overlays and graphics um there are online tools too i think there's there's a plethora of them but i've i've been a photoshop guy for 15 years or so so it's like that that's where i'm most comfortable uh i can i can do things very quickly in that software i know it very well so that's what I do. But um, yeah, there's a lot, there's free stuff out there that's just as good as Photoshop. It's just not what I've used. Um, Validon, hi. Do you use Video Ninja to isolate the audio or is there a way to ISO audio from say Zoom or a similar program? I'm trying to balance audio from the same source is always a pain. Yes. So yes, uh, on Video Ninja, uh, essentially what you do is you have a link to view the uh, there's a, there's a push link. That's the link that you send your players. There's a view link. That's the link you bring into your software. Uh, and then there's a caption link, which you use for getting the captions. Uh, so with that view link, it's a, just a browser source that you pull into your, um, uh, your capture software. And, uh, you can set, there's a little option on OBS studio. Anyway, there's a little so section that says control my audio via OBS. And so you do that for each of those players and they show up as an individual audio stream. They are not compiled together like you would with zoom. They are individual. So, um, so that again, it's another really helpful thing with video ninja. You can do it with Skype. Uh, but it's limited in in the amount of time you can spend there i uh, can't quite do it yet in zoom i don't know why they haven't done this yet but yeah um uh daniel says uh, is there something you realized with experience that would have saved you time slash effort either something you're doing that was a lot of work for a little impact or a tool that spread things up a lot um honestly like uh 
I wish I had it was it was much harder and still is much harder for me. I my whole plan was to create a channel that did RPG stuff. And so I spent a lot of time trying to make saving throw the thing. Um when I should have focused on a personality, a, a person. <laughs> um that tends to go much better for um uh it goes over much it goes over well with people uh to have a singular personality that that they can kind of connect to and follow uh i just knew i wasn't comfortable with that i wasn't that person so i focused on doing the uh a group thing and that that honestly took a lot longer um so yeah, if if I could, I would go back and I would try to honestly do a lot of that engagement stuff more. I would focus more on that. I would cut down the amount of streams that I was doing and I would instead focus that onto um, getting, talking to people and getting them to know what we were doing. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have grown as big as we did um, at that time. I would have, I would have kept things smaller. Uh, yeah, Procreate's great. Uh, voice meter is intimidating. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, affinity, yeah. Uh, it, that 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 sounds great too. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that answered your question, Daniel. There's there's not like any one tech or anything, any, any or tool that that I use that you know made my life infinitely better. Video Ninja honestly helped tremendously answered a lot of questions it also introduced a lot more questions um because of the kind of the resource heaviness of it uh but it it improved the quality of my life uh and and things so i can make a technically uh more proficient stream you know i can i can move people around now uh much more easily than i could if I was trying to pull in Zoom or anything like that, I can I can make things bigger or smaller. I can I can cut out someone's audio and bring up someone else's audio. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I can do on the back end with that 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 I couldn't before. So that that's really helpful. I wish that I could do that in the studio, <laughs> but the studio is a whole lot different. There's a whole lot there's a lot more going on in a studio than there is remotely. Yeah, yeah, I you know, I've reached out to Matt Colville to uh, back way 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 back when when he was trying to get his streaming stuff started. We had been streaming for two or three years at that point, and I was all like, "Hey, I'm here too. I can help you out." Uh, but yeah, they've def. I mean, clearly he doesn't need my help. Um, <laughs> they've been doing great, but but yeah, uh, he's got a lot of great uh, advice. That's another thing. I mean, I I would go out and I would find the people who are talking that i uh, like like i said you know share the people that you enjoy and that are telling information that you like like b dave walters if you're not following b dave walters definitely go do that b dave gave a whole twitter diatribe of what it's like running a stream and and paying people and doing all of that we pay people uh we have you know a bunch of different income streams that we utilize for that uh, we don't pay people a whole lot. I'll, I'll be straight up. We pay people 30 bucks an episode. Um, I, I try to be as transparent as possible with, with things. Um, 30 bucks is not as much as some and a lot more than others. Uh, and we pay people depending on how much income we make during that show too. So um, they get a percentage basically of, of, uh, of the profit. So yeah. Um, which is something that not a lot of people do. A lot of people just pay a standard rate and that's all you get. Uh, but ours kind of can go exponentially the more we get. So yeah. Anyway, B Dave did a whole diatribe yesterday of this. Uh, Tanya DePass is offering a class this weekend. It's $75, I think. Um, uh, but highly worth it she does amazing work if you watch into the motherlands or uh realms of uh water right that's what it is um 
uh, she has been producing streams for a long time now. So if you have the money, I highly recommend going to that. That's uh, something that she's running, I think, Saturday. But if you find her on Twitter, that it's there. So <laughs> yeah, Rivals. Um, perfect, Rivals of Waterdeep. Uh, yeah, go check that out. So there, there are a number of people who are, who are doing this. I, I love doing, I, I am more than happy to answer questions for free, uh, because I, I love what I do and I want people to do it and do it well. Uh, the more good content we can get out there and diverse content, uh, the, the better our spaces, the better our lives will be. So yeah, I really like that. Um, ephemeral. What would you need to actually do an actual play live stream in person? Any advice for doing that? I don't. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's what we started out doing. Uh, and um, a key component is audio. Audio is difficult to do when everyone is in the same room together because uh, depending on the microphone that you're using, you're, you may not pick up everybody equally well. Everyone's voice is going to be different. Everyone's voice is going to be picked up differently. So your audio is going to be of paramount concern. Um, after that, it's how many cameras do you want to deal with? Um, do you want to have the critical role set up where everyone is on camera all of the time? Or do you want to do camera switching like we did when we very first started? Um, uh, you can do that too. There's different equipment involved, but um, yeah. I, I would also say uh, if you're interested in doing, um, kind of building a studio, uh, uh, here's a little life, life pro tip. Um, check out Houses of Worship. Um, there are a lot of people on YouTube that, I mean, it's, it's wild to me that churches have this kind of equipment. And anyway, that's a whole other topic, but they have there's a lot of wonderful people who are to do um tutorials on how they stream their services and honestly the parallels with how we stream uh are um consistent and almost limitless so uh that's one place that you can go to find out how to stream because a lot i've i found that a lot of how to stream rpgs there's not a lot of tutorials on how to stream rpgs there are a lot of tutorials on how to stream to twitch if you are a singular streamer playing a video game, there's a lot of those, but there aren't a lot of how to stream RPGs. Um, and certainly not a whole lot of how to stream RPGs if everyone's in the same room. Uh, but the um, but Houses of Worship do that, uh, do have a lot of tutorials because they can. Uh, and yeah, I don't know why there aren't more <laughs> for, for RPGs or just for general general video production. Uh, I would also, um, there, there's a couple of channels that Gaming Careers, I think, on YouTube and uh, Nutty on YouTube uh, have really great like OBS tutorials and, and OBS plugin reviews and things that I have used a lot of. Uh, and uh, so I would go check them out uh, as well. Um, Yes, Bryce. Yes, yes. Always, always find the best and steal with both hands and give credit. Um, yes. Uh, Green Lantern, uh, you'll have to go to their um, their Twitter profile. I, 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 they're doing it through a service. I don't know which. It's, it's a new thing, I think, and it's designed to be super interactive and stuff. Uh, but I don't remember what it is, so uh, definitely go check that out. Um, yeah, we still got about mm, eight to 10 minutes or so. So, uh, happy to continue asking or answering questions. <laughs> I'll ask you a question. Uh, Alpha stream asks, um, I use OBS studio. How should I be checking my audio at the start of the show to make sure I don't have any issues like echo or another sound source playing? Um, so in OBS studio, uh, in your audio mixer section, uh, at the right hand side, there are the little cog wheels. If you right click those cog wheels, you can find advanced audio properties and going to advanced audio properties on the right hand side of that screen, you see audio monitoring. Uh, most everything is set to monitor off. Anything that you wanna be able to hear set to monitor and output. That way you can, um, 
uh, hear what basically your audience is going to be hearing. Uh, again, this can get tricky with audio routing because you might hear echo that isn't actually existing. So what I usually do is I will do a short recording uh, before I go live so that uh, I can hear what it will actually sound like uh, uh, to to people. So your the recording is always going to be what is actually going out. So if you don't hear anything in that recording or you you hear echo in the recording or whatever, then it's there in that in that mix. So that's where you have to um, deal with it. Uh, any tips for podcasts? Yeah, don't overthink it. Uh, so um, I did promise I would talk more about podcasts and I apologize for not doing that. So we didn't start as, as a podcast. We've we've only done one like made for podcast show and that was um, uh, experience pointers. Um, but honestly, like we held back because we were like, oh, we, you know, we're not, we, our audio is weird and it's designed to be a video. We don't want to put it out on podcast. Don't wait for that. Um, uh, just take the audio into Premiere or whatever video editing software you have, strip out the video, edit the audio to where you want it, put in an intro, put in an outro, you know, hey, welcome to Saving Throw Show. Let's get on with the show. You know, uh, listen to our partner Audible, whatever, and then play the show. And uh, don't worry about it too much. Just get it out there. Uh, but obviously there's a huge caveat. Um, there's a huge caveat with that because audio quality is paramount. You have to have good audio quality. It, I mean, it has to be at a level that you don't want to claw your ears out, right? Um, so do take that into consideration. But other than that, like, don't, don't worry too much about, you know, throwing it into, to, uh, there's a software program called Levelator that you can throw your audio into as an MP3, throw it into, just drag and drop it into Levelator and Levelator automatically evens out all of your audio uh, so that it's not too high and not too low. But uh, just know that if your audio is too low and it has to bring it up, it's going to bring in a lot of noise into that audio stream. So just be aware of that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's handy, but I've even stopped using Levelator, honestly. Uh, if you, if you are recording live and you are monitoring the audio levels, uh, and you're getting good audio that way, you can, you know, skip that step basically, um, if you're good with it. But, you know, I'll say our audio is not perfect. And again, our audio is not, we have never said the final destination would be a podcast, but, um, that's. That's what I would say. That's those are my tips for podcasts. Uh, don't don't overthink it, uh, but do know that your audio needs to be pretty good. So make try and get everyone on their own audio uh, track, and um, so that you can adjust people individually. Um, good sources for intro outro music. I use Pretzel Pretzel Rocks Pretzel dot rocks uh, on the internet. Uh, they are royalty free, so you can play them, and Twitch won't send you a takedown notice um uh also uh, you can check out like tabletop audio uh battle bards um are are good ones roll 20 has some some good um royalty free stuff uh yeah yeah that's that's what i primarily use twitch twitch actually has a whole like soundtrack section that you can get music that has already cleared Twitch and is okay to use. So yeah, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. D and D breakfast club has curated royalty free playlist. So there you go. That's great. A reminder, if you have not yet, please turn in your ticket. Uh, if you have a friend who bought a ticket and wasn't able to make it, have them turn in their ticket. Uh, it's really, really easy to turn in your ticket. You just go to your event list in uh, uh, Gen Con and you go to this event and you say turn ticket to event host. Click that button and it goes to us. Uh, and it, it means a lot to me 
Uh, but it also means a lot to Gen Con because it lets them know that this uh, this content is attended well and is necessary and, and needed. So uh, they they let me do it uh, more and uh, hopefully allow me to, to bring more people in. So thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your questions. Again, uh, you can find me at the two uh, places down there, Twitter at Gadzook, Instagram at dom.zook. Honestly, Instagram, probably not a great way of getting in touch with me. Honestly, probably not a great way of following me anyway, but Twitter is probably one of the best ways to. Uh, and then Discord, uh, our Discord, one of uh, our wonderful mods will post the Discord. Uh, you can find me in there. I am in there nearly 24 seven uh, and um happy to answer questions. I'm always very, very happy. Anyone who has ever questioned that and then asked me a question has been uh, proven wrong. They, they know that I am happy to answer questions. So yeah, uh, come at me. I may not be able to answer you immediately, but uh, uh, if you're nice, I'm nice. So <laughs> that's great. So yes, go out, create, build upon things. Uh, uh, always look for something new. Dare to know. Supere albe. Uh, Latin. Uh, and uh, yeah, make great content. All right. Thank you all so much. And um, hopefully I see you in person next year at Gen Con 2022. All right. Uh, oh, and we have another panel on Sunday at two o'clock Pacific, uh, five o'clock Eastern time, Owl Bear Soup, where uh, our Owl Bear chefs will be planning an adventure with some special guests uh, and running the, the their typical show with news reviews and interviews uh so i hope that you can tune in for that it's a lot of fun and uh yeah get your tickets for that and um it's also going to be here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show and wednesday we're back again with the dice x machina which is our DD show that's at eight o'clock pacific time so I hope that you can come in and watch. You can see all the t tools and tricks that I've talked about being used on that show. So, uh, or check us out on YouTube and see kind of the progression of where we've come and where we are now. Uh, anyway, thank you all so much. It was great talking with you and I will see you 